Hi, I'm Apostle Dr. Carolyn Cooper from the Invaders for Christ Family Center, Freeport, Grand Bahama, Bahamas. On behalf of myself and my husband, Bishop Clifton Cooper, we want to extend to you a warm welcome to the miracle service of Pastor Sean Pender's ministry and his wife, Pastor Amy. We pray wherever you are or whatever you're doing that you would come and be a part of these three nights of miracle working healing power of God. It will be at Plano, Texas. Come! There is a supernatural divine healing in the house. You will not regret it. I don't care what your condition is. Jesus will be there. Our spiritual son, Pastor Sean, was at our church. And I can tell you, many sick were healed. Many deliverance was sent to the captive and recovery of the sight to those who were blind and bound. God bless you. See you there. Please invite someone else out in Jesus' name. trust in you thank you Jesus I will trust in you let the weak let the weak say I am strong in the strength of the Lord I will trust in you I will trust in you. Let the weak say I am strong in the strength. Tell them you are my hiding place. Come on, let's sing it to the king. You are my hiding place. You always fill my heart with songs of deliverance. Whenever I am afraid, tell him you are my hiding place. Sing it to him. You are my hiding place. You always Fill my heart with songs of deliverance Whenever I am afraid, I will trust in you Somebody lift your hands to heaven and tell them I will trust I will trust in you Thank you, Holy Ghost Let the weak Say I am strong in the strength. Glory to God. Tell him I will trust. I will trust in you. We love you with everything in us this morning. I will trust in you. Glory to God. Let the weak say I am strong in the strength of the Lord I will trust in you sing it to him I will trust in you let the weak say I am strong in the strength. Good morning and welcome to another morning prayer broadcast. My name is Mark Zimmerman. Uh, many of you know my brother Jeffrey. Uh, he's been on the broadcast many times. Um, both of us have known Pastor Sean for many years, uh, almost 30. We met in 97. And let me tell you something, uh, they are a wonderful 
man and woman of God team. I have never seen uh, a man or woman alone, let alone a man or woman of God, with the character of Jesus that I see in Pastor Sean and Pastor Amy. Amen. I know many of you have been touched by their ministry, and so have me and my beautiful wife, Bernadine. And we are so honored to be on this platform today, sh- helping them to share with you uh, God's holy word. Amen. What, matter of fact, why don't you go ahead and give them some love down in the comments. Subscribe to their channel. I'm sure they would appreciate it, and you will bless them amazingly. This morning, we want to continue in this amazing series, You Are Never Alone. And our topic today is going to be to stay faithful to God. We're going to start with uh, um, the setting back in um, the first invasion of Jerusalem, about 605 B.C., prophesied by Jeremiah in tw- Jeremiah 25:11. But our focus today is going to be a young man named Daniel and his three friends, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. More specifically, their unwavering faithfulness to their God. Let's pray. Lord Jesus, we thank you for this time. We're able to come together, Lord. We thank you for this time, Lord, that we're able to share your word, Lord, with your precious people, Lord, on this morning, God. I pray, Lord, that your word would go forth, Lord, and would be so simple, God, that even a child can understand and run with the knowledge that is coming from your word today, Lord Jesus. Because we know, Lord, it's not the size of the hands that build your temple, Lord Jesus, that build your kingdom, Lord Jesus. It's not the size of the hands that build your kingdom. It's the size of the willingness and the heart that's willing to obey you, Lord Jesus. We thank you, God. We give you glory for all things, Lord. And we thank you, Lord, for your people. And Lord, give us ears to hear today what you have to tell us. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. All right, like I said, uh, there was a taking over. Basically, it was a time uh, in history where Babylon took over Jerusalem. So basically, a country was taken over another country. And the king, uh, Nebuchadnezzar, ordered his eunuch Aspenaz to bring young men without blemish and handsome in appearance, skillful in all wisdom, endowed with intelligence and discernment, and quick to understand, competent to stand in the presence of the king and able to serve in the king's palace. Now, this meant they raided a lot of houses, and in one of them in particular, um, there was, this meant that legally police raided people's houses, uh, pulling them out, separating families, and uh, Daniel, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego were among that, that group. They were upper-class teens. At, at this point, uh, Daniel was actually 19 years old when this happened. Um, they're rich in wisdom and excellent in spirit. Basically, they were singled out for making straight A's in school. The, the, but just because they were doing everything right, they were pulled from their families, and they never saw them again. Uh, Daniel, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego were different. On top of that, Daniel, Shadrach, and and Abednego were taught the literature. They were forced to learn the literature of the Chaldeans and the language of the Chaldeans. They were forced to learn another language, basically. And Daniel 1.5 in the Amplified says, The king assigned a daily ration for them from his finest food and from the wine which he drank. For three years, it was a three-year preparation. So at the end of that time, they were prepared to enter the king's service. And the prince of the eunuchs even renamed them um, instead of Daniel and uh, the, re- the rest of the uh, names that they had, um, it says Daniel was rena- renamed Belteshazzar, Hananiah was renamed Shadrach, Mishael was renamed Meshach, and Azariah was n- renamed Abednego. These are all Chaldean names. And this whole re- re-education, re-identification process was to make them unrecognizable as Jews, to p- forget their roots. Matthew Henry notes in his commentary, it was to make them forget the God of their fathers, the guide of their youth. They give them names that savor of the Chaldean or Babylonian idolatry, trying to change them into good Babylonians, basically. And most of the Jews captured at this time buckled 
under the pressure. They simply adhered to the new administration, as many of us would probably do in the same situation, honestly. It was scary. It was a scary time. There was a country taking over and forcing them to do all these things. And as much as they could, Daniel, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, they obeyed the new laws set over them as much as possible. They didn't just resist for the sake of resisting, you know. That's another thing many of us may have failed to do, right? Um, But the proverb says in 28.4, you know, just resisting the law, um, they that forsake the law praise the wicked. Resisting the law just for the sake of resisting the law, that's, that's never a good reason. Romans 12, 18 says, If it be possible, as much as lieth in you, live peaceably with all men. But they drew the line at eating the king's meat. See, God never commanded them not to let these officials rename them. Or God never commanded them to resist learning the language or the culture or anything. But in Daniel 1, 8 in the Amplified, it says, But Daniel made up his mind that he would not defile taint or dishonor himself or God with the king's finest food or with the wine which the king drank. By the way, shout out to their moms and dads for bringing these boys up right. They were away from their families at this point. They'd been separated from their families, but they're still standing up for what's right. They're still, they still have a relationship with God, so kudos to mom and dad. Now, why, why was it d- to defile themselves when they were eating the king's meat or drinking his drink, um, maybe the king's food may have included the meat of animals that God said was not to be eaten. It says in Leviticus 11 and Deuteronomy 14. Or it could have included some animal fat, which God said wasn't to be eaten either, um, in Le- Leviticus 7:23, Some sources even say the food was offered to the Babylonian gods, whatever the case. It, was, it would be to defile themselves to eat of the king's meat, basically. One thing was for certain, though. Daniel had such a deep love and relationship with his God, he wasn't about to risk dishonoring God by disobeying what he commanded him. John 14, 15, the Amplified says, Jesus told us, if you really love me, you will keep and obey my commandments. So the pressure was on. And we're, and we're in Daniel 1, 8 right now, the Amplified. So Daniel basically took the reins. He took control. And asked Ashpenaz that he and Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego might be excused from eating the king's meat. Now God granted Daniel favor and compassion in the sight of Ashpenaz. So this shows us that even in the middle of undesirable and unfair situation, God still gives you favor. So that's amazing right there. So because of this, even though Ashpenaz was afraid of the king, he let Daniel talk him into testing him and his friends for 10 days by letting them eat vegetables and giving them water to drink, the things that you know, God said was okay to do. And at the end of these 10 days, big surprise, right? They were looking better and healthier than all the young men who ate at the king's finest food. <laughs> it's amazing what happens when you obey God, right? So the overseer continued to give them vegetables. Phew. Disaster reverted. This time. This time. But over the years, they continued to enjoy the success and they adhered to the Babylonian culture as much as possible. But never to the point of compromise. That's very important. They never fell away from their God. As a matter of fact, they grew closer to him. And as a result, we're in Daniel uh, 1, 17 of the Amplified. God gave these four young men knowledge and skill in all kinds of literature and wisdom. Daniel also grew with God to understand all kinds of visions and dreams. God gave him that gift because of the relationship he had with, with, with God. It was even to the point that whenever the king, we're in uh, Daniel one twenty in the New Literal Translation, whenever the king consulted them in any matter requiring wisdom and balanced judgment, he found them ten times more capable than any of the magicians and enchanters in his entire kingdom. So they had that spirit of excellence on them too. In chapter 2, uh, King Nebuchadnezzar had a dream. He called together his Chaldean magicians, astrologers, and sorcerers. I mean, he just finished 
grooming Daniel, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. They already proved themselves to be ten times better, but he's calling his Chaldean wise guys, whatever. Anyway, but they could not interpret his dream. Big surprise. And even though Daniel and uh, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, they weren't even there in the meeting. They weren't even called upon. Daniel 2.13 in the King James Version says, The king's decree went forth that the wise men should be slain, and they sought Daniel and his fellows to be slain. Now ain't that some mess. Da- Daniel, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, they weren't even in that meeting. They were actually obedient. They were doing everything right. Yet, they still had people seeking out to kill them. I, I feel I need to say this. Sometimes you have those who are supposed to have your back. They betray you. And they stab you in the back. It's easy to feel, God th- to, to feel that God has done the same thing. But I'm here to tell you, God is with you in these situations closer than ever. He's not stabbed you in the back. He hasn't betrayed you. He's right there. The, Bi- the Bible says he will never leave us and he will never forsake us. When unfair situations threaten to consume you, God hasn't stopped being God. God is still wonderful. God is still the counselor. He's still the almighty God. He's still righteous and beautiful and loving. And he's still your savior, your healer, everything. He's still God, no matter what happens. Some people feel like they're betrayed by God. He'll never betray you. I just feel like I needed to say that. We need to take these times to realize John 15, 19 through 20. Jesus, this is the New King James Version. Jesus chose you out of the world. Therefore, the world hates you. A servant is not greater than his master. If they persecuted me, Jesus said, they will also persecute you. It's going to come. You're going to be at, at odds with the world. We're not going to get along. That is if you, if you have the Spirit of God inside of you. John 16, 33 in the New King James Version. In the world you will have tribulation, but be of good cheer, Jesus said. I have overcome the world. In Hebrews 13, 5, there it is. I will never leave thee nor forsake thee. And Daniel knew this. So he, with counsel and wisdom, godly counsel and wisdom, mind you, he bought some time with the king and the, and the dude that was trying to go out and kill him. He talked to him so he could give him the meaning of his dream. Instead of complaining or talking about this is an unfair situation or go, oh, woe is me, or God, why are you doing this? He called Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego to a prayer meeting. And together, right there in Daniel 2, 18 through 19, American Standard Version, in verse 18, it says, they desired the mercies of their God of heaven concerning this secret. They went the exact opposite direction that the enemy expected them to go. They loved on their God. They desired of him in his presence. They drew near to him. Like a child has just fell down and skinned his knee, reaches out for his parents. The same way. Then, in that close time of fellowship with God, the secret was revealed unto Daniel in a vision of the night. Then Daniel blessed the God of heaven. Very important. Always be thankful. He spent the, uh, verses 20 through 23 just giving thanks to God. He made sure he, he recognized who gave him that gift. Daniel went up before the king and gave the interpretation. And in verses 27 through 30 also it says too, he was making sure the king knew it was not him that interpreted that dream either. But rather the one true God in heaven, he made sure Nebuchadnezzar knew where this came from. After which the king still made Daniel a great man and made him ruler over the whole province of Babylon and chief over all the wise men of Babylon. Now now he got promoted, right? Then he also set Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego over the affairs of the province of Babylon. So your promotion is coming. You're going through it right now, but your promotion is in the middle of that mess. You're coming out of it on the other side uh, of victory in Jesus' name. So because of their faithfulness to their God and their love 
for their Heavenly Father. Every, you know, th every trial came with a promotion every single time. Because of the love they had for their Father in Heaven, every situation brought them higher and higher. But how many of you know, right, with new levels come new devils. Many times situations will get worse before they get better. Ask me how I know. But as sons and daughters, indeed refined by God himself. Let's look at Isaiah 48, 10 in the Amplified. As believers in Christ, tested and chosen by him through the furnace of affliction. That includes trials and tribulations, guys. Don't let any of these situations change who you are. Don't let it make you reject the work that God has already begun in your heart. You've already been forged by fire, and the devil's going to do everything he can to try, to try to get you to forget or to put off what God has helped you uh, obtain already. God has already began that work in your heart. Don't let go of God. Be faithful to him. 1 Timothy 6.12 in the Amplified, fight the good fight of the faith in the conflict with evil. Take hold of the eternal life to the which you were called and for which you made the good confession of faith in the presence of many witnesses. Never let go of your loving potter's hands that even now continue to form you into something even greater than you are right now. Daniel was promoted to third ruler in the kingdom by chapter 6 under a new king, King Darius. But even then, the king was tricked into passing a, a decree. You know, even, even though you have people, this, this man, this, this king favored Daniel, but he was still tricked. In uh, Daniel 6 and 7, in the New, new Literal Translation, it says, For 30 days, any person who, pr who prays to anyone, divine or human, except to the king, will be thrown into the den of lions. This was being set up by a bunch of people that were jealous of Daniel, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego and wanted him out of the way. They wanted him dead. Now in Daniel 6.10 in the Amplified, it says, Now when Daniel knew that the document was signed, what did he do? Did he panic? No. He went what has been his, his, his life. This was a pattern in his life. This wasn't just something he just decided to do. This, is, this was in his soul. This was in his heart. He went into his house. Now in his roof chamber, his windows were open towards Jerusalem. He continued to get down on his knees three times a day, loving on his God, praying and giving thanks before his God as he has been doing previously. He's not gonna, he, he did not turn back on his God. He stayed faithful to his God. Well, the king gave the command, and Daniel was brought and thrown into the den of lions. Now, we're going to go back a few chapters in uh, chapter 3, where King Nebuchadnezzar, a similar decree went out. Um, this is where in the Amplified again. At the moment anyone heard music, I believe this is chapter 3, verse 5, they were to fall down and worship this golden image that uh, King Nezi had set up. And whoever does not fall down and worship shall the same hour be cast into the midst of the burning, fiery furnace. But Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, who the king had set over the affairs of the province of Babylon, did not regard the decree, same thing, and refused to get, serve false gods or worship any idols. They were about to turn their back on their god. No way. As a result, these men were bound in their garments, were in uh, verse 21, and were cast into the midst of the burning, fiery furnace a furnace that was heated up seven times greater than normal and burned up the officials that, he, that picked them up and even threw them in there. But this is where our hearts need to be, and it's the work of the Holy Ghost. You have, to let the, you have to let the Holy Ghost work inside of you. The way they answered the king, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego resolved in their hearts. In Daniel 3.17, New Literal Translation, If we are thrown into the furnace, the God whom we serve is able to save us. He will rescue us from the enemy's power. But even if he doesn't, what if God doesn't come through the way you think he's going to? What is your character going to be like? Are you still going to love on God? Are you still going to seek him? Are you still going to hang on to him? 
We want to make it clear to you, they said, your majesty. Notice they maintain that respect. They're not, they realize they're not fighting kings or kingdoms. They're, they're fighting principalities here. That we will never serve your gods or worship idols. So just like they, they say, for, stay faithful to your first love. Love and pray for those who persecute you. And realize you are never alone. Daniel, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego realized this. And because of it, an angel was sent to close the mouths of the lions. And not even so much of a scratch was found on Daniel. And he lived. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego fell down, bound into the fiery furnace, but did not burn up. Instead, Nebuchadnezzar the king was a, a, astonished to see four men walking around, loose in the midst of the fire. Now, he only cast in three people, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. But the fourth was the Son of God. And they also walked out of that fir furnace without a hair of their head singed or any smell of fire on their clothes. And I want to make it very clear. These men were not delivered out of trouble because of their relationship with God. They were actually thrown right in the middle of it. But you know what's right in the middle of the situation you're dealing with right now? As a result, they, they experienced a visitation from King Jesus himself that they could not have experienced otherwise. And it's all because they were faithful to God. They loved on their God and they were never alone. Lord Jesus, Father God, I present your people before you today, Lord Jesus, and I pray, God, that whatever situation they're in today, Lord Jesus, Lord, they may be in, a, in an impossible situation. Maybe their backs are against the wall, facing a, a bad report from a doctor. Maybe they've been given a death sentence. But let them know, Lord Jesus, they are not alone. You are right there. You're their deliverance, Lord Jesus. You are their Father. You are their loving Heavenly Father. And you will never leave them. And they will come out the other side more than a conqueror. If there are some of you out there today that haven't yet given your heart to Jesus and are trying to do this walk alone, you're going to fall. You're going to fail. Without Jesus, we can't do anything. But if you want to give your heart to Jesus right now, I want you to lift your hands to heaven and just pray with me right now. Say, Father God, I believe that Jesus Christ is your son. He died on a cross. He was buried in a borrowed tomb. And he, three days later, he raised from the dead. He died for my sins. And I receive him into my heart right now. From this day forward, I turn my back on this world, on my flesh, and on the devil. And I turn into a new direction, a child of the Most High God. From this day forward, I will obey you. I will love you, and I will stay faithful to you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. And if you just prayed that prayer with me, first of all, put, put, put a comment down below and say, I've just been saved. And let me be the first, me and my beautiful wife, Bernadine, let us be the first to welcome you into the family of God. Hallelujah. God bless all of you. Thank you for your time today. And go with God and always stay faithful to Him. He won't let you down, I promise. God bless. To support the work of God, the preaching of the gospel, visit us online right now at seanpinder.net forward slash give. You can also give through the ministry PayPal account. That address is paypal.me forward slash seanpinder ministries. You can also give through the ministry app. Many of you have downloaded the Sean Pinder Ministries app. Amen. You can give through that app as well. You can also give through the ministry Zell account. The ministry Zell email address is info 
at SeanPinder.net. You can also give through the ministry cash up account. That address is the dollar sign Sean Pinder Ministries. You can also give through the ministry Venmo account. That address is at Sean Pinder Ministries. You can also text to give. All you have to do is text the letters SPM to the number 45888 and a link will automatically be sent to you. You can also give by mailing your donations into the ministry. Just remember to make your checks and money orders out to Sean Pin the Ministries, P.O. Box 2726, McKinney, Texas, 75070. Join Pastor Sean Pinner in Plano, Texas for three nights of miracles at the Plano Event Center, Tuesday through Thursday, August 13 through 15 at 7 p.m. nightly. Come and experience a life-changing time of anointed worship and powerful preaching and witness the power of God live as souls are saved, the sick are healed, and lives are transformed. Register today. Visit MiracleNights.net to register. This is your time for a miracle. See you there. Never forget me and my beautiful wife, Pastor Amy, we love you. We appreciate you and thank you, our wonderful partners and viewing audience, for your support and your prayers. God bless you. See you again on tomorrow morning on another morning prayer broadcast.